Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Alpha Wave Semi with Todd Berman Solo. Going to talk today about what's changing in CERTES. Todd, what is the purpose of CERTES and where do you see it changing? Well, really what CERTES is trying to do is just trying to bring a lot of data into a small amount of space so that it's just more cost effective. It, it goes faster, but you don't have to do it through a, a large path. You can have minimal number of pins that are just giving you as much as you can. So then that way uh, it's more economical. And then also you can now have a lot more of those that if you need to have the the high, you know, the high data throughput, you can do that. But yeah, I mean, anywhere from mobile applications to just your, your home computer on the internet to upcoming AI, everything needs more data faster. So this you know, Surgeon's capability just helps us just feed that that need for more and more data. Let's dig into this. Sure. Todd, what's changing in Surgeon's? Well, to, to maybe understand that change, let's look back at kind of how this came about as a, as a necessary technology. And so you'll hear the term Surgeon's a lot, and it just stands, it's short for serializer, deserializer. So that's where you're taking a lot of maybe slow, wide, parallel links, which is your data, let's say coming from CPU, whatever, and you're trying to reduce it in the smallest number of physical channels you can. And so at this point, it's going to, it's going to speed up. You're going to, you know, you're going to do a lot of tricks to compress it into there. And then when it comes back, you have to reverse it. You have to take this, this very fast running, but, you know, very uh, physical, efficient data transfer, and then you spread it back out to your slow and wide again. This started basically, yeah, just because as we started integrating compute, this, this became very important. Physically, we just can't, we can't cable everything together the way we want. So we, we started out with, you know, back in the, uh, the one gigabit per second regime, we just had, you know, maybe something like a, a transmitter driving a simple receiver and we could go pretty fast and it it gave us a, a good uh, parallel to serial conversion but you know now now we're shipping 100 gigabits per second so we've we've had to we've had to extend this very simplistic view over the past 15 years to where we're now we're, we got you know 200 gigabits per second coming next and then the next next <laughs> is 400 uh, gigabits per second which with with the ai applications this can't come fast enough and basically this is just about more data that you have to move through from one area to another and you're doing a lot more processing with a lot more processing elements so now you have to figure out okay how do i get that data over there somehow right and i guess it's you know the analogy of like driving your car you know you you can either expand the highways, but that, you know, that's just too much, too much uh, space. And, you know, uh, you, you don't want to spend all your cities having highways. So what you do is you just keep, instead of having the 70 mile per hour uh, speed limit, you do 140 mile per hour and then you do 280. Well, you know, that's not safe for, for driving, but for us, we can do that. We can just keep driving, driving the packet of data faster and faster and faster. But what it does is it adds, it adds some new complexities. So on the, the serializer state, this is the, the transmitter, and on the deserializer, this is the receiver. But what it ends up doing is we had to add you know, more complexity on the transmitter, and, and maybe that burns a little more power. So then what we do is we go out and we, we look for um, more advanced silicon process nodes to make it smaller and smaller so that we can do this extra performance, but actually not spend any more power. And we're still, we're still kind of using you know, similar, similar kind of wires or similar cables maybe we can make these a little bit better. And then over here, we, we add some more, more processing here. So maybe we'll, we won't just do a simple differential compare. Maybe we have to add some gain stage, right? And maybe we have to add some advanced equalization, like a feed forward equalizer or a decision feedback equalizer or uh, some new, uh, or not some new, but some, you know, some newer implemented tricks like a maximum likelihood sequence detection. So you, you end up, you, you kind of hold this, this physical channel trying to make sure that, you know, people can do their, their one to five meter cabling or even, you know, an optical, you know, the kilometer range. 
you're still trying to hold that form factor, but if you're you're trying to drive the the data faster and faster, you know, doubling really every every generation, we have to put more more compute, more smarts in here to help you recover that signal while you're going at these crazy speeds, like you know, moving up to two hundred and four hundred. Does it get harder as you get into heterogeneous integration where you have a lot of chiplets in a in a package? Um. It, it it solves some problems and it, it creates new problems. You know, when you move away from the monolithic die so that you can do like a little chiplet oriented, you get the best silicon process for, for let's say your certies, and then you get your best silicon process for your, let's say your compute, and maybe the, the, another best silicon process for your memory. So it solves the problems that we're now, you don't have to make one process do, do it all. You can actually kind of uh, specialize, and and you can use these um, you know chiplet based integration to allow you to bring it together. But then of course you're adding in you know you're adding in uh, some new interfaces. You know you're actually when you do the die to die, you're not doing the certies. Um, you'll do like a, a standard like a UCIE, but uh, it, you know it adds a little bit more complexity. But like I said, it it, it solves some problems and introduces some others. How does this differ from monolithic planar designs that we dealt with for years? Yeah, that's a good question. So a lot of what happens uh, when you when you do monolithic, you're kind of limited by what they can make in the uh, semiconductor fabrication phase. And so that's what they call the, like the reticle limit. Like they can only make something so big, but if you get to the chiplet, so, you know, instead of your monolithic die here, well, now you could build you know, a bunch of chiplets that are actually the same size. So now you can have a collection of these kind of reticle limit dies. And now you could make your semiconductor design a function of these four hooked together that, you know, uh, you couldn't build something this big in, you know, in just the uh, semiconductor process alone, but you can build the pieces and then integrate it together on a package. Um, and then you use, you know, kind of your die to die interconnect within this uh, this package substrate, you have your CERTES connecting out, and that gives you ability to basically integrate uh, and, and make something that normally you would, yeah, you would be limited by the monolithic uh, requirements. In the past, I think most engineers thought, oh, CERTES, I just get that off the shelf. I don't have to worry about that. Are they now uh, having to work with CERTES in a way that they didn't in the past? Yeah, I think with, with the speed of this going, yeah, it, it's, it's not as easy. To, to just have it uh, assumed or have a, a design team just ramp up quickly on it. And so that's where, yeah, we're, we're, you're getting to a point where you got to have, you know, the, the, the team of experienced veterans that have, have gone through some of these early days and they really understand the trade-offs. And then we've got these, uh, you know, these nanometer level going to sub nanometer level silicon processes that you're implementing on. So it's, it's very much a, you know, a degree of complexity at such a high rate that it's, yeah, it doesn't lend itself for every semiconductor vendor to know how to do that. So the, the kind of the chiplet approach or, you know, even the IP approach in general just allows you to take when you have a recipe, you can, you can let people use that recipe and then they can just go on and focus on their other like value add part of the chip. But in terms of a chiplet, you can actually take it one step further. You can have a recipe that works really good for one process, and then you you don't have to have that process for everything. You can you can actually put that piece down, be done with it on your package, and now you can worry about designing those other things in whatever process and whatever manner that it makes the most sense for that piece of the of the design. You've got a lot of data moving through here. How do you guarantee the signal integrity on that? Well, this is where kind of the you know, as you design in these these advanced features, you know, it's it's a lot of the kind of the built-in self-test. You know, you're, you're you're putting in a lot of computation. You have to have the design for testability so that you can actually, um, and yeah, you can actually verify the reliability of it. And then as you integrate things on a package, well, now you know now you've got a you know the failure point, which is your your die to die. So now these standards really have to grapple with a lot of these. Uh, you know, hey. You're giving me this this great tool to, to to build bigger bigger and bigger computes, but yeah, you you also have to put in the uh, the test infrastructure. And I know with you know the die to die, the specification is putting together ways so that you can you know test and verify that stuff 
And so then when you do integrate it, you, you know, you know, you've got a, a good quality part. Same thing with the 30s. You know, as you design just the signaling, you're also designing in its ability to test itself and to give a, a reading of its reliability. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's great if, you know, you can drive a Ferrari, but you don't want to drive the Ferrari and constantly have it, you know, bust a tire. So it's the same thing, like part of the design requirement. You want it to be fast, but reliability is also assumed because it's no good if it's, if it's failing. Some of these designs, it's not just one Surtees too, right? You may have different Surtees running at different speeds. Correct. Yeah. So it depends on the application. Like if you if you look at like a general a purpose CPU, you know you're going to have memory, you're going to have PCI Express, you're going to maybe have a CPU to CPU interconnect, um, some some lower speed miscellaneous. But then maybe if you're looking in like a, the back end of a, a data center and you just have a switch and it's just nothing but thousands and thousands of Ethernet connections. Yeah, there's there's kind of a there's a wide range of applications and you have to have a certes that allows you to tailor it for the application you need. And by tailor it, I mean, like you want to be able to hit the data rates, but you don't want to like spend too much power or too much area. So so part of a, 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 the thing that we think about uh, when you look at this, um, you know, when this the certes is going from from the transmit to receive, uh, we're thinking of like how how much uh, space or how much shoreline is it taking? You know, this is kind of the beachfront. And so it's very important to make sure that beachfront is, is you know, um, increasing in the amount of bandwidth it can send, because that means we're getting denser and denser. And that's what, you know, that's what basically all our applications, you know, our, our faster internet and our faster AI applications, that's what it's demanding is we have to cram in more and more data through that same basically physical uh, shoreline. And so, the, yeah, it, we evolved the certes to help keep keep pushing the density requirement. So for engineers working with this, what sort of trade-offs are they likely to encounter? So there's um, there's a couple things. You've got uh, bandwidth, um, you have power, um, you have like what, how far you can go, reach, and then, uh, you know, there's uh, other items like latency. So maybe we'll stick with those. So they're, you know, you're, you're trying to get a lot of, you know, a lot of data going from point A to point B. And usually what's happening, if you think of, let's say, an AI application, you've got a, you know, you've got a, a, a GPU that needs some new data to train on, or it's making an inference calculation. It's not going to do its job if it doesn't have a, a steady stream of fresh data. And it's actually going to be limited by if that data stream is slow, then so will that computation. So, so the bandwidth is usually, hey, you know, you just got to feed these 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 heavy compute things with as much data as you can, and that's going to be the the positive experience you see on the application. You're going to see your internet browser responding quickly. You're going to see your, your Netflix streaming, uh, you know, flawlessly. So so it's all about bandwidth, but it's like, what is it going to take? You know, are, are you gonna are you gonna burn you know uh kilo or megawatts to do it no you want you want milliwatts you want as as small as possible so you so the idea is like you you have to, this is the, the target this is the need and how can you uh, how can you spend uh, your power and then there's also area you know how can you spend your power and area to make that as uh, economical and as efficient as possible does that change as you get into ai because you have so many different modifications to LLMs and, and all the other uh, AI software. So now you may have a completely different update that behaves uh, totally different here. And so when you get into the to the the AI application, which is really a new, a little bit of a new paradigm, you know, compared to the, the history of, let's say, maybe the some of the Ethernet and PCI Express, but you let's say you have a rack and it has these these platters of, of different things, you know, GPUs and, and such. And then you've got another rack next to it and you have a bunch of these and then you imagine going down a row and then going to a different data center well within a rack you've got you know you've got connectivity that needs to go here so this needs to be super fast within here and then it's going to hop from rack to rack and that still needs to be fast but doesn't need to be as fast so you're almost building kind of um, macro level cpus where they're going to have a lot of computation and the computation is so big that it actually can't live on one component and needs to be spread across a whole mess of them. 
So you now you're you're we're creating these applications in AI that go way beyond one socket item, whether it be GPU or, or CPU. It's got to be spread across. Well, I mean that that could be very painful if it's spread across in a slow interconnection. So they want the interconnection to be super fast. So so for this, the Surtees really needs to be super high bandwidth. Um, you know, it needs to be power efficient because you know <laughs> you don't want to turn these things into toasters. Like so, uh, you you have to have power efficiency and then density. You need to get it in there. And then as they go from rack to rack, you need your reach and you need to have some concept of latency. Um, and then as you stitch this all together, imagine, you know, thousands going to millions of these of these compute nodes all hooked together to to create these these very complex LLM uh, models. You know, the the connection of the CERTES is what's really given them the ability to act as like one compute unit versus just individual pieces of silicon. So going back to where we started, how is all this changing and how does it look going forward? So maybe kind of just the history of compute, it, you know, kind of gives us a window into what to expect. So I remember getting a personal computer and then, you know, you know, having different programs loaded on it. And really that 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 was the system that I was looking to go fast. So if if I had a slow processor or not enough memory, it was really a kind of an individual experience. But now the, things are getting so interconnected and the compute so distributed. Now that experience is really you're you're getting applications that take advantage of that distributed. So you know whether it be our, our mobile being able to access stuff on the data center real time, or these these uh, AI applications are being spread across, you know just you know data center upon data center. What's happening is now it's like with the system being expanding. Now it's okay. Now there's there's pieces that need to be improved, but it's all being graded at this higher aggregate level of. Okay, how does it help with the inference of an AI model? How does it help with the training? And so now the, that very high level, just almost like several levels above the, the electrical, that's driving what do we do? You know, do we, how do we focus on bandwidth and reach power and latency to, to make that very big macro scale problem, you know, better? Where, where actually it's no longer kind of an individual experience. And uh, we, yeah, we rely on a, a more kind of you know, maybe a lot of groups that haven't had to interact before. They need to talk and they need to collaborate because uh, we no longer have like a, a good feeling for what success. And of course, when you know you have these big data center developers, they know they know their electricity bill. <laughs> they know they know exactly what success is, and they can tell us what what that translates down to. Each one of these little thirty interconnects, or each of these um, silicon chiplets, they they know what they need to see because when they scale it up by a million or a billion, uh, it becomes very clear to them what's what's critical for the for the next generation development. Todd Berman, thanks for a great explanation. <laughs> Thank you.